Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of my podcast series, Robrovsky Chronicles. These are audio-only episodes where I talk about topics that you can listen to whilst doing other things. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Robrovsky mistakes to avoid based on observations I've made and research I've done. Number one, choosing a Robrovsky because they are cute and or small without actually researching into what it's like keeping them as a pet. On various forums, I see people asking what to do because their Robrovsky is too fast to handle or because they aren't sociable or simply because they never see their Robrovsky as it is only out when they are asleep. The second mistake is linked to the first, but it is buying Robrovsky as a pet for a child without researching the type of pet they will make. I'm not saying they can't be a pet for a child with the right adult supervision, but I do think that hamsters are promoted as good pets for children when they probably shouldn't be. This is because they are out at night when the child is asleep. They shouldn't be woken up in the day unless in an emergency. It does matter because this impacts their well-being, stress levels, health routine, etc. And they may also bite if startled. They also require careful handling because they are so fast and could get injured or lost easily. And while some are very friendly, a lot of Robrovskis are frightened of being handled and would rather be touch-me-not pets as they can be quite timid. Whilst I think that an adult can help a child to experience a Robrovsky as a pet in the proper way, I'm not sure when they would get to see the Robrovsky or interact with it unless perhaps very early in the morning if they wake up early and the Robo is still out. So I'm just saying that this decision needs to be made very carefully. The third mistake is assuming that because they are tiny, they only need a small enclosure. I was recently in a chain pet store. I heard the member of staff advising a customer that because the customer had picked out such a small enclosure, that when choosing their hamster, they should look at Robrovskis rather than any other hamster because they are the smallest. I found it a bit bad for the staff member as they seemed a bit helpless when looking at the tiny enclosure that the customer had picked out. But at the same time, I wish they hadn't recommended a Robrovsky just because they're the smallest. All hamsters need plenty of space and all hamsters need an enclosure with depth and deep bedding so they can burrow which is natural to them. The minimum recommended size for a hamster enclosure is 100 by 50 by 50 centimeters. The fourth mistake is assuming that a packet of hamster food mix from a pet shop is all they need to be fed. Hamsters are omnivores and they need seeds, grains, insects and fresh food. Pellets are not natural or nutritious and so we need to be careful in choosing our Robrovsky's food mix. In the wild they have mainly seeds and grains and they also eat insects freshly leaves and stems. If you're interested in finding out a bit more about this, have a look at my all about Robrovsky hamsters and what you need for your Robrovsky hamster videos. I also plan to make a more detailed diet video in the future, but I'm still working on that one. Another mistake I'm sorry to say is buying a hamster ball for a Robrovsky. I really wish you couldn't buy hamster balls at all from anywhere. They are not okay to use, but shop selling them implies that they are. For starters, the hamster has no choice. They are essentially in a tiny plastic enclosure with nothing in it and when they walk it rolls. It can be very stressful for the hamster to be in a ball. There are obviously air holes in the balls but these are dangerous because the hamster's tiny paws can go through the holes and if the ball is in motion their legs can be twisted or get trapped. Stairs are a potential massive problem, I won't say any more on this except that it's highly dangerous. Also, a ball rolling around can be a big temptation to other pets. You may choose to play with it, which could harm or kill the hamster. And the hamster can potentially escape if the lid comes off, which would mean they could get lost or injured. They also don't have access to water in the ball and could get dehydrated. And there are just so many reasons why a ball is not a good idea. The next mistake is only putting a thin layer of bedding in the Robrovsky's enclosure and or only providing a bit of sand. Robos need a lot of sand to dig in and roll in, etc. because they originally from the desert so it's natural to them. Bedding should be very deep so that they can burrow deep into it and make tunnels and chambers for food storage and sleeping. This is natural to them and having a thin layer of bedding only can mean that they are more likely to become stressed. And the final mistake I'm going to talk about today is housing more than one Robrovsky together. Pet shops will sometimes encourage this. I recently went into a small local pet shop and there was a sign up selling Robrovsky hamsters for a certain amount each 
or for a pair, there was a deal. In the wild, Wabrowskis live in pairs based on their own selection and they will breed and raise young together. The young will move out as soon as they are old enough to look after themselves. In captivity, they will fight over resources like water or use of the wheel. Often, one of the pair will be the one not allowed to access resources, which is obviously very dangerous. They will also fight, which can end in severe injury or death. Some people seem to find it amusing to watch Robroskis fighting over something or one trying to sleep on the wheel whilst the other runs in it and all of that sort of thing but it's just horrible and cruel to put two Robroskis in this situation. When they are babies they do all cuddle up together and it is super cute which is what we often see in pet shops but as soon as they are older the fighting will begin and in the pet shop that I mentioned one of the Robroskis did have a bad injury above its eye because of a fight because they were older and they shouldn't have all been in an enclosure together. I hope this was useful for anyone thinking of getting a Robro we're looking to check in or improve robo care if you think i've missed anything obvious or if you'd like me to talk about any other particular hamster care issues then please do let me know thank you for listening